guys, it's your boy the Kryptonian Say in here bringing you a review for One Piece Chapter 226. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. So this chapter, once again, Nico Robbins shows up and the plot moves forward. Like, I'm loving this chick, man. I'm loving, I'm loving Nico Robin. Like, I gotta start the Itachi, Itachi ranking because that's my favorite character in Naruto. And I said to say, Nico Robin, oh man, she's, if she keeps doing this, she's gonna be my favorite character. Like, hands down. Hands down. Like, I just love, I love the design. I love, like, the black hair. I love the fact that, you know, she's resourceful. I love that, once again, when she shows up, the plot moves forward. While Nami's chewing everyone out, she's just like, hey, I've got a map. Where we're at now, this is called, this is the uh, town's name. We need to go over here. There's some person named uh, Cricknick, like we need to go over there. They talked, uh, they said that this person talked about dreaming big and that's why they're exiled. Reminded me a lot of you and lo and behold, they're going to meet this person. Like this is what I love about Nico Robin. She is definitely just what's pushing the plot forward, man. I, I, I love that. Now, with that being said, I want to talk about uh, one of the themes in this chapter, and really the last three chapters, or yeah, the last three chapters, four counting this one, which is the purpose of gender roles and masculinity. And you have Nami, she has this very interesting line where she says, you guys are supposed to be men. Men don't back down from fights. And Usopp at one point said, why is she being upset? she didn't even get into a fight and there's nothing wrong with her and what I loved about that is on one hand society does expect men to not back down when challenged you know it's just like me man you step on man foot man kill. like that's that's how society raises men however Luffy and Zoro they took the higher road and I feel like that says more about who they are as men you know, a lesser man would have been drawn into combat. A lesser man would have reacted. And for as much crap as I get Luffy, that's what I mean. When it comes to emotional intelligence, he's very intelligent. Because Luffy understood where these guys were coming from. And he was able to just to discern, to assess the situation and discern their movements. And with Luffy, it's just like, or discern their intentions. And with Luffy, it's like... He's embodying what happens when you take the higher road and when you do the thing that is not always the most popular. And it just seems so symbolic that the captain and the first mate are the ones who took the higher road and people don't understand where this is coming from. I love that. I love that. Like, like that's why when people tell me, why do you go so deep with themes and stuff in one piece? It's because there's so much that you can grab if you just pay attention. If you go back and reread these arcs very carefully, or if you do what I do, where you review it chapter by chapter, it's just so many, and one arc will have so many different themes. And, you know, I guess the best way I could put it, you know, one of the YouTubers I follow is uh, Geekdom 101. And what he has is a series which I highly recommend, which is called Dragon Ball in Depth. And what he does is, on those videos, is, is he does what I do at One Piece where I take out a few themes and I just really look at uh, a few themes in each of the chapters when they really stand out. Whereas what Geekdom does, he goes saga by saga. And I guarantee if you're someone who is uh, saying, oh, Dragon Ball is just about fighting and there's no real depth to it. If you look at those videos, you can definitely see why Oda took so much from Dragon Ball and also from the deeper meanings that were in a lot of those arcs and character interactions because that's one of the reasons why I am so strong on One Piece because it really reminds me of Dragon Ball in a lot of ways. Just the writing styles, every other lot of it. And with that being said, you know, that's, that's over with. Like I said, check out Geekdom. Love the dude's channel. That's one of the tubers that I aspire to be like course with my own spin but with that being said I do think that it was pretty freaking hilarious that you had Sanji okay and Sanji the beautiful thing about Sanji is is Sanji is looking at uh, Robin 
and once again he's going right into a character okay i talk about out of character in character and with sanji he's like robin do you want food or should i should i run you a bath first and it's like this dude is really really slick man like sanji reminds me of roshi that's something roshi would have done because you know sanji's like okay you take your clothes off i'll get the bath ready and i can see sanji being in the tub waiting for him man because there was this scene way back in the Alabasta art where he was in the bed waiting for VP and VP was just like, I'm gonna sleep over here. Like, Sanji's real smooth with it, man. I like this dude, man. But this chapter, like I said, a huge focus was just on masculinity. And the thing is, is it definitely comes right back into play when you look at what happens later on in the chapter where they meet Masira's brother. And that's when we get news that, oh, somebody took out Crocodile and his men, and it's starting to spread. So the Navy has one story out, but Crocodile and his men, they have another one. Not, not Crocodile and his men, the underground, like the pirates, they know that somebody took them out and won the Navy. And I'm really wondering if Smoke is the one spreading that around. But the thing is, is he's like, I'm going to take place for that and the guy's just talking out his ass. It's Masir's brother and Luffy's just like, oh, you're one of the seven warlords too. Luffy is just like, when I read that, I was like, are you trying to pick another fight? And what happens is, is once again, masculinity. Because once this guy feels like they've, uh, they've kind of shat on his uh, masculinity, if you will, that's when he starts trying to break breaking apart the ship he's going on the offensive and he's doing what the stereotypical man does and what luffy and his crew do is instead of engaging the order is given for them to fall back to retreat which goes back to picking and choosing your battles this was really good man i really enjoyed this man so my chapter question for you all is what at this point what was your thought process well not even at this point scratch that what did you think about my assumption that this arc is really, or not this arc, but these last four chapters, four counting this one, are about masculinity? Do you think that's an actual theme for this? But as always, if you like anything I have to say, hit that like button, comment, rate, subscribe, share. I would greatly appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome day.